What's up everyone? Today we have a really interesting question where we are going to take in an unsorted array and then our goal is going to be to find the longest consecutive sequence of numbers in that array. So let's go ahead and look at this example we have. In this first example, this is our input and we can see that the longest consecutive array is this 456. So we would return three as the length of the longest consecutive set of numbers. And then in this one, there's no consecutive set of numbers. And so our length is going to be one. So we're going to, because it's just going to be any of these numbers basically, or I guess you could have two different fives, right? But it would be this array of length one. So now that we know what we're doing, let's go ahead and dive right into this problem. And first, what we want to do is just make sure that we fully understand the problem and what's being asked of us. So there's not too much to understand here, which is nice. We may want to make sure that we understand what they mean by consecutive numbers, because in theory, you could imagine someone saying like, oh, well, I just meant like increasing numbers. So I want to know the uh, length of the longest increasing array. That wouldn't really make sense, but you just want to make sure that you're going to understand exactly what's being asked of you. Make sure you clarify any other questions you might have. And so now let's get into how we might actually solve this problem. And hopefully your first thought is the same as my first thought, which is that, oh, well, let's sort the array. Because that would be one potential way that we could do this, and that would obviously make things a lot easier. If we were to sort the array, then we'd have things in order, and then we could just traverse the array and look for you know, consecutive numbers. And that would be fairly easy, and that would take uh, O of n log n time, right? Because so if we were to sort the array, it would look something like this. We would take this as our input array, and then we would sort it into 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, like this. And that would take O of n log n time. And then we would traverse through this and we would say, okay, well, you know, I'm starting here and then, oh, well, the next number is consecutive. So now I have a length two, but oh, this next number is not. So now we're going to start over again and compare. So we'd get one, two, three and reach the end. And then we'd say, oh, well, three is a longer subsequence than two. And therefore that's our result. And so this would be a pretty good solution. This would take, as I said, O of n log n time, right? Because you're doing a sort and all sorts take n log n time at least. Uh, and then it would take O of, it would take O of one space, right? Because you're not actually cr creating any additional data structures or anything by doing this. So in the one downside being of course that you are modifying the input so you may, depending on the circumstances, you might have to create a copy of the array and then sort that, which would then mean that you're taking O of n space, which is not really any better than <laughs> anything else. So let's think, though, maybe we can do this faster. And especially if we're trying not to modify the input and we're going to have to use O of n space anyway, then we can do better than this. And we can do better than this because we have a data structure that we can use to look up these, all these values in constant time. And that is, of course, a hash set. So if we were to create a hash set with these numbers in them, so you'd have a hash set like this, it would deduplicate the numbers. So in this case, you would end up with just one, three and five in your hash set. And then let's say I take a number like I look at the number one to start with. Then I can say from my hash set, oh, well, I know that the next consecutive number should be two. So if two is in the hash set, then, oh, well, I have a sequence of length two at least. So I can start with my one of the values that I know is like I could just iterate through my values. And for each value in my original input, I can say, oh, well, is there the next number in the sequence? And then once I find, if I find that next number, is there the next number after that? And then the next number after that, and I can keep going. And that would work reasonably well, because we could just keep doing that. But of course, if you think about it for a second, you'll realize that, oh, well, that's going to take O of n squared time and O of n space. And the reason it could take O of n squared time is let's imagine that you were to look at, let's imagine that you were to take this and it's already sorted and you were to look at the numbers in order. You would say, oh, well, I have one and then I'm gonna, you know, I find the next number two and three. Well, let's say I actually had this. So it's just a sequence as is. You know, you'd continue through all the way, et cetera, et cetera, dot, dot, dot. 
and then you'd iterate to the next value and check for that. So you check for two, you get two, three, dot, 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 and et cetera, et cetera, for all of them. And you could see that we would end up going through the whole list. Uh, like we would end up with an n squared algorithm. But we can optimize this slightly because we know that if we are at this one here, and the next value is two, we don't actually need to look at the list starting at two, right? Because we know that the list starting at two is just gonna be a subset of the, or the list of consecutive numbers starting at two is just gonna be a subset of the list of consecutive numbers starting at one. And so we can actually just say, we can optimize this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I'm only going to look at a list starting from the leftmost value in that list. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna say, okay, well, let me check. If I, I'm gonna iterate through here, so I'm gonna iterate through my numbers, I'm gonna say, okay, one is the leftmost, because I can look up zero in my hash set and see that zero is not in the hash set. So the, left, the number to the left of one doesn't exist in my set, and therefore one is going to be the lowest number in its range of consecutive numbers. And then I can iterate through for one, and I iterate through the whole list once. And then now I come to two, but then I look at two and I try and look up two minus one, which is one in the hash set. And I see that, oh, well that already exists in the hash set. So I don't need to actually iterate from two because I know that that's gonna be shorter, a shorter subset. And so it's not gonna be my maximum subset. And so by doing that, we're gonna iterate through all of the numbers once. So that's gonna take linear time. And then from each number, we could potentially iterate through n more numbers, but you're never going to iterate through, you're never going to iterate over a number more than twice. And what I mean by that is we're going to start at one and then we're going to, so we're iterating over one and then we go through the whole, we iterate over all the numbers because one is the smallest number in that set and we're looking for the set. Then we come to two and we've already iterated over two once, but we're not going to iterate over it again. And same with three and four and five and six. So if, and then if you had a split, thing like this you would you know start here you'd iterate over one and two and then when you get to two you'd see that one exists and then when you get to four you see that oh well three doesn't exist in the hash set so I'm going to iterate over these numbers again but then for five and six I don't have to check so hopefully that makes sense it's a little complicated but we're going to write the code now and the code should make this very clear what we're trying to do so let's go ahead and we're going to create a method called uh, consecutive that's going to return an integer so in consecutive and it's going to take in just an int array and now so I'm going to start by defining my hash set and adding everything to the hash set because that's sort of the core part of this algorithm so I'm going to say hash set integer and it's going to I'll just call it values equals new hash set. And then I'm just going to iterate over all of my integers in the array and add them. And it's automatically going to deduplicate them as I go. So I don't have to worry about that, which is nice. So I'm just going to say for int i in a values dot add i. And now, so I have them in the hash set, and now what I want to do is I want to iterate through all of the values that are in the hash set, and then look for those sequences that start with each number. So I'm going to, you know, keep track of what my current max is, and then I'm going to actually iterate through, rather than iterating through the numbers in my original array, I'm going to iterate through the values in my hash set because that way I'm going to avoid going over duplicates because duplicates are pretty irrelevant here since you know obviously so I'm going to iterate over this and then first I want to check that it's the leftmost value so if it's not the leftmost value then I'm just going to skip it and so I could say if values dot contains i minus one then continue Right, so this is just going to say, if it contains the value to the left of my current value, just skip it. 
because I don't want that. I don't want to go through the list from there. And you could also, you could reverse this. You could say, if it doesn't contain that value, then go through the whole thing. But I think this is a little bit, a slightly cleaner way to write it. You know, you can do whatever you want because both would be equally correct. And then let's say that I am at the leftmost value. I'm going to say that I'm going to, you know, track the length equals zero and then I'm going to say while values dot contains I plus plus length plus plus and let me actually explain this line briefly so the what we're doing here is we're just going to continue we're going to loop through as long as the next value is contained in our set so we're going to say it's going to start with I actually because as hopefully you know when you do this uh, plus plus, it says it evaluates or it evaluates the outer expression first and then it just increments i afterwards. So if we're going to start, let's, I mean, if we had, um, if we were here and we were iterating through this and we had one, it would start with uh, values.contains one but then it would increment i after calling the contains. So we're going to do this for each value and then it's going to say i equals one and then increment it and then two increment it three four five and then it's going to say values dot contains five it increments it and then it says values dot contains six and that's you know that's false so we're going to break out and so hopefully that makes sense and we're just going to increment the length each time so we're we're just iterating through up because we are looking for numbers in consecutive order and then all we have to do with that length is just say that max equals math.max of max and length. And obviously that's just going to take the maximum of the two. And then finally we return max. So that's actually fairly straightforward, right? So nothing really crazy going on. And let's go through an example. So let's take this example here, which is a you know slightly interesting example. And we will, I'm actually going to put this into sorted order because we can, you know, we don't actually know what, well, never mind actually, because we don't know what order we're going to iterate through in the hash set. So it's better for us to test it this way. And so let's go through. We're going to iterate through. First, we see four. So we, ha we put everything into a hash set and then max is zero. Let's say max is equal to zero and then we're going to say i equals four and we're go okay so we're going to say values dot if values dot contains i minus one so does values contain three and it does not so we say length equals zero equals zero and then while values dot contains i plus plus so values contains four so length gets incremented by one then now i is five so values dot contains five it does here so we increment length again and then one more time so we increment i and then whoops so we already did that no nope, we didn't do that okay so i is now equal to six so we are going to say uh, this contains six, which it does. So we increment length one more time. And then we increment i one more time as well. And now we say it does not contain seven. And so we're going to say max equals max of max and length, which is obviously going to be three. So max is now equal to three. Now we're going to come back again. We say, OK, so now i equals two. And so, and length equals, well, i equals two, and so values does contain one. Like we have one here, so we're not going to iterate through the, uh, so we're not going to iterate through from two, and so we're just going to continue. We increment i again, or move i again, so i is now one, and then we say values does not contain zero, so length equals zero. And while values dot contains i plus plus, so it contain it does contain one and it contains two, so we increment length twice, and then we say that math 
dot max of max and length, which is still three. So we're not going to update it at all. And then we're going to come back to here again. We go to six, six. So six minus one is five, and the the hash set contains five. So we're going to skip it. And again, we increment it one more time, and the hash set contains four i minus one. So we're going to skip it again, and now we're done. And then we just return max, which is three, and that's what we expect. So hopefully that made sense and hopefully you can see how we were able to use this to actually, even though we're going through the whole thing multiple times, we're, we're able to do this in linear time. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below or on the blog. And otherwise, I will see you guys again soon.